How many of you love to be challenged by a show of hands? All right. How many of you love to receive gifts? I hope every hand goes up on that. In six and a half minutes, with your permission, I'd like to deliver a gift to you in the form of a challenge, a challenge that can help you and others that you know help achieve their highest and best. What are these? I call them beautiful objects. And who are we? When trying to understand something or someone, we have a tendency to produce a label very quickly and attach that label to that thing or that person. So who am I? We all ask ourselves this question, and we produce our own labels, and sometimes those labels are produced by other people and associated with how we think and feel about ourselves. When I was 10 years old, I was finishing up the fourth grade, looking forward to summertime, time off, relaxing. And my parents got a phone call from my English teacher saying, we're concerned with John's ability to read and to spell. And I instantly thought, oh no, summer school. <laughs> the idea was that my parents then took me down to University of Delaware, had me tested and assessed for reading. And truly, I did have a challenge. I was diagnosed with, with dyslexia. Now, I didn't know what dyslexia was. But in fact, the, the diagnosis was that I was suffering from dyslexia. And I knew what suffering was. And when I heard that term together, I thought, boy, this can't be good. But what I learned over time was that dyslexia was challenges, some type of reading disorder, despite normal intelligence, though that could be challenged with me as well. And I equated dyslexia with being a non-reader. That was a self-imposed label of this equation that I put on. I didn't read. By the time I finished college, I probably had consumed no more than 20 books, and actually deep into my 40s, consumed no more than 20 books. Went on to uh, a challenge in my life, fast forwarding to about 46 years old, and there were some financial challenges, there's personal challenges, maybe it's the quintessential midlife challenge. And I was taught that when you were facing a challenge or a problem, one thing you could do was to express gratitude and appreciation. This is my dear friend, Sarah. Sarah lives out on the West Coast. She's from Wilmington, Delaware. And I had written Sarah a note and reached out to her because she had done something very kind to me in between high school and college. And I never forgot that. So expressing this gratitude and appreciation, trying to get out of my own way and out of my own troubles. And Sarah responded back and said, hey, I'm coming to Wilmington. Why don't we get together and have coffee? And I thought, great, here's a fresh set of ears that I can dump all my problems onto, right? Have we ever done this? So, so Sarah came to town, we sat down, we had a coffee, it was a very enjoyable time, probably two and a half to three hours together. And she also confided in me some of the challenges that she was going through in her life, which seemed to be almost parallel to things that I was going through, or at least as challenging. And as we had this exchange, I was noticing how put together she was and how solid and in her core. And I felt internally like I was crumbling. So at the end of our coffee together, I asked her, I said, Sarah, what is your secret? How is it that you're so together with, in the midst of your challenges? And I am, you know, looking for answers. And she said, you know, I read a book. And right there, all the blood rushed from my head. I said, a book? The answer's in a book or no? I didn't say that out loud, but that's what I was thinking. So we finished up. I went into my car. I Google searched the book, and I found the book on iTunes and downloaded the book, and within two days I had finished it. 
And that book changed my life. Now, the idea is that it's not really about dyslexia or reading or a book. It's about a limiting belief that I had that I was not a reader. I went back and looked up the definition of reading. Let's read this together. <clears throat> but I honed in on the fifth line, which was to hear the spoken word of someone speaking on a radio transmitter, as if to say, do you read me over? And I said, wow, what is reading actually? I changed my definition of reading and accommodated for my own limitation. And it opened up an amazing world to me. So this is a cycle that we all operate in, whether you know it or not, which is called the belief potential action result cycle. The idea is if you don't believe you can achieve something, you won't take the action necessary to produce the result. Right? That makes sense. But where does that belief come from? And much of it comes from the label that we put on ourselves or that we accept from other people. The amazing potential. So this was the initial result. 20 books in 46 years. And in the past five and a half years, I've been, uh, finished five or close to 70 books. And great books written by people like Malcolm Gladwell and Brene Brown, uh, Elizabeth Gilbert. You may recognize some of these names because they were TEDx speakers or TED speakers that I learned about through TED and then went and read their books. Don't label me is sometimes the reaction that people will come away with. But labels are not bad. We need labels. They help us get through. Here's the magic formula. The word impossible. Separate yourself from that word. And it simply looks like this. So, these are, and I am. My challenge to you is simply to do this. Think about your limiting beliefs and how you can take that limiting belief and that label and change it to reach your potential. But most importantly, find somebody else, see something in them, and help them achieve their highest and best. Thank you very much.